Hello and welcome to this feature interview. I'm Kelsey Hubbard. Today on set with me I have Dr. Charles D. Thompson Jr., a professor of the practice of culture, agriculture, and document studies at the Duke University. Dr. Thompson presented a lyceum last week about his book, Border Odyssey. Dr. Thompson, thank you so much for being on set with me. Thank you very much. It's good to be here. So what exactly is this book about? It's about my travels along the U.S.-Mexico border. I went there because I think there are a lot of misperceptions about the U.S.-Mexico relations, about the history of the relationship between our two countries, and I hoped that I could bring back stories that would help expand on the debate and hopefully humanize the, the fears that, that really represent that region for so many Americans. And why did you choose the, this name specifically for your book? Border Odyssey is a, actually, you know, Homer's Odyssey was the, one of the seminal pieces of literature that, of course, we have to nod to when we think of Odyssey. But Odyssey is about a trip, a search, a uh, two steps forward, one step back kind of journey that, that Homer, uh, Homer's character Odysseus took. And it, I felt that way for me. It was a search. I didn't know exactly how to get to where I was going philosophically and so forth, but I thought I just had to go. I, I had to be at the border region to, to, make, uh, to be a witness to this uh, incredibly misunderstood place, a place of violence, but also of potential. Borderlands are that kind of place. Just about anything can happen. And I wanted to be there. I wanted to be someone who wasn't afraid, that we're, I, I believe we are the land of the free and the home of the brave, and I wanted to act that out. And why did you think that this book was so important to actually write? Well, all you have to do is listen to the latest presidential debates to know that there is a lot of animosity towards immigrants and a lot of misunderstandings, in my opinion, and I believed that people really need to have more information. There's, when we let our fears overcome us in any way, like a lot of times it's in the category of race or gender or any time when there are borders between people, when people don't cross or when they don't go there, they can make up all sorts of fantasies in their minds. And so I decided I would go and listen to people, listen to their stories, and try to bring those back and give people a broader audience. And so that was my sense. I never felt that I was in any danger. I mean, I tried to play it smart. I wasn't in places where it would be, uh, you know, where I'd be after dark or in, in drug gang sort of territory at the wrong moment. But I, uh, I also th did do things that the State Department said you shouldn't do, that people warned us against, and, and, and here I was. And, and my wife went with me, and I never felt in any way that it was a bad idea. I thought all along, I'm learning so much. I want to tell people about this. And so were you specifically on just our side of the border? Or did you go to both sides of the border? There are a lot of official crossings all along the way. There are sister cities starting in Texas and in New Mexico and Arizona and California. There are, there are cities on either side that are codependent, really. The, my favorite name is Calexico and Mexicali. So there's California and Mexico mixed in two different ways and the names are right across the border from each other. And uh, so every possible crossing, legal crossing, that there was, we went through. And we went south. It's really easy to go into Mexico. You just walk through. You don't even have to have a passport. It's coming back that's a challenge. <laughs> so we had to show documentation and so forth. But some of those places are so benign and so unthreatened by, by people who go through. We didn't have to have a passport in, in a couple of places. But yeah, we did that and then we drove all along the 1,969 miles as close to the border as we could get. And as the book shows, sometimes that led to flat tires and really rough territory, in physically I'm speaking of. And, uh, and led to a lot of adventures. But you know, one, we have one national park that's right on the borderline. 
That's the Big Bend National Park. On one side is Mexico and on one side is the U.S. We went right down the middle of the Rio Grande in a canoe. And so we were right on the borderline for miles and miles in a canoe. Well, that sounds exciting. You mentioned that your wife went with you. Was there anyone else who went along on this trip? No, just, uh, just all the people that we met along the way. And there were, there were people that uh, were workers, people who were working on farms that I met. There were politicians, including a, an incredibly uh, helpful mayor that we met in a place called Eagle Pass. There were journalists. There were pastors and priests nuns, um, and all along the way, it was one person after another who was telling me how to go to the next place and who I should meet and so forth, and, and it was an adventure all right. It was something that maybe not everybody would want to do, and that's one of the reasons that I think that writing about it is, is helpful. It's, it's a way to bring people along with me, um, uh, to tell about what I experienced, and you know, once you write a book, it kind of takes on a life of its own and it begins to, each little book that is published goes out and somebody reads it and then they tell their friends about it or they share it with their mother and, you know, you never know what, what that will do. And it's taken me to a, a lot of different places and I'm doing a reading here at my alma mater and, you know, I didn't know that would happen, but it's really good to be back. Well, awesome. Thank you so much for joining me on set today. Good to be here. I'm Kelsey Hubbard and this has been your feature interview.